Hey, what's up guys? Hope you had a good weekend. Well, actually it's Tuesday now that you're seeing this, but it's uh, Monday as I'm recording it. Um, last week we did a video with the common emitter amplifier, where I showed you kind of the theory behind it. So I built one, and we're going to take a look at the operation. So first let's go over the common emitter amplifier. At the heart of it is an NPN transistor. For our purposes today, we're going to use the 2N2222. It's just a simple transistor that's everywhere. And it works well for small signal amplification like this. So we're going to start out from our collector through a collector resistor. In this case, I'm going to use 1K. And then our emitter is going to have the emitter resistor, in this case, 220 ohms. Now remember, the point of the emitter resistor is to present, prevent, not to present, to prevent a thermal runaway. Because what happens when you're doing this class A amplification is the harder the transistor drives, the hotter it gets. And the hotter it gets, the harder it can drive. So it gets into this vicious loop where it'll just burn itself out. So we just limit the amplification here with a resistor. Next, our signal comes in through the base. And that's the basics. The signal comes in through the base it creates a larger current flow from the collector to emitter junction and that's where our amplification comes from so let's have our VCC up here and for our purposes today it is going to be 12 volt DC and ground of course is down here now the first thing that we want to do is we want to eliminate any DC coming into the circuit. Easy enough to do. We just put a capacitor on the input. I'm going to use 0.1 microfarad. Worked just fine. Now the next thing that we have to do is we have to bias the base of the transistor with a voltage divider. So two transistors, we're going to use 20K and 3.6K. I'm sure you remember your voltage divider calculations, but V out, so the voltage at this point here, is R2 over R1 plus R2. And since we're doing 12 volts, in this case, we're going to get about 1.8 volts here. And that is going to give us a nice bias point for our transistor. Now we're going to take our output here off of the collector. And again, we want to eliminate any DC coming out. So we're going to use another 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So we're, we're blocking DC coming in, we're blocking DC coming out. So the only DC in the entire circuit is right here in the amplifier. And the reason for that is, is so that we're only getting the AC, the audio signal, audio signal in, audio signal out. We're not adding any DC to bias our circuit one way or another. And finally, we're going to add one more capacitor here. And that's going to do a couple of things. It's going to bypass any hum, which you can get from your mains if you're driving this off a of power supply or anything like that. And it's just going to help to keep this thermal runaway from happening here. So there's our circuit. Pretty simple. This is a class A amplifier, which means it is on all the time, which means number one, it is the most linear type of amplifier 
which is good for audio. But number two, it is the least efficient type of amplifier. So here is our 2N2222 transistor, and the pins from left to right are emitter, base, and collector. Here is our 1K uh, collector resistor coming down to our collector. Now, I didn't have a 20K resistor, so I'm using a 20K pot, and I'm just using the inner leg and the wiper. So there's our 20K pot there. And there's our 3.6K here, giving us our voltage divider. There's our emitter. There's our 220K or 220 ohm emitter resistor. And then let's look at our input. Our input's coming right here into the base through this blue line, and it's being decoupled there. Our output is right here, the yellow line, and it's being decoupled there. And finally, we have this last emitter capacitor right here going to ground. So there's our circuit. Now let's set up our test. Let me uh, zoom out here just a little. Now if I bring up the signal generator, you can see we have it set for a sine wave, 1K, and 1 volt going in. So. Let's hook it up. We're going to start by feeding our circuit with the 12 volt DC. And then we're going to inject the signal. Always hooking up my grounds first. So the signal from the signal generator, the 1 volt 1K sine wave is going in there. And what we can do here is we'll take a look at it on the scope. Okay, so we're hooked up there. Get rid of that screen. All right, so we are seeing a one kilohertz signal. We're at one volt per division, so we're seeing two volts peak to peak. That's our input. Now let's switch it over here to the output of our circuit. And take a look at that. And there we go again. Now we're seeing our output to our circuit. So we're at one volt per division there. And we are one, two, three and a half divisions. If we bring up our measure, we can see there's our frequency, there's our mean, and there is our peak to peak. Why does our peak to peak say minus 40 millivolts? Oh, because, uh, My dumb butt had things set up wrong. I'm losing my mind here. Give me a second. Okay, well, I had the <laughs> times 10 attenuator on there, so that was our problem. Anyway, I put on the cursors here so we can measure it. And let's see if we can zoom in there and get you a better view so you can see what's actually going on. There we go. So our two volt peak to peak, or the one volt peak to peak that we fed in is now 7.2 volts peak to peak. Uh, cursor off. I'm still getting used to this new scope. I hit measure. There we go. So that is our common emitter amplifier. I hope that helped to explain things a little bit better for you and give you an idea of how you can build one yourself. It's not that hard. It's a lot of fun and it can be uh, pretty useful to do. All right. 
you guys enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.